Welcome to the Dave and Mateo show. <laughs> <laughs> this might be our last time. I'm not true. It's not, <laughs> not happening. Okay. Um, how many people uh, have done work with GraphQL before? Couple? Cool. How many people have worked with React Hooks before? So we have the right crowd. Yeah. Yeah. This is good. Um, if you haven't done either of those things, probably the person next to you has. So feel free to interact. Yes. With us and with each other. You have my permission and blessing to do so. Or try <laughs> questions and whatever. Um, Follow us on Twitter as usual, you know, quick oh reminder. Yeah. You know, it's David McClem and at Matteo Collina. So please follow us on Twitter. Thank you. Um, so let's, I would say let's, let's start, Dave. Let's start. Yay. So uh, welcome, everybody. And this is an interactive workshop. So if you suspect to do some coding, maybe. Uh, there will be some material left over to, to be a home, a do, do at home exercise, because it's a short format. So. Yeah, there's seven parts. We're hoping to get, we really want to get to part three. Uh, in the hour, uh, we might get to part four. So, we'll see. But it's self guided as well, so you can just keep going if you want to. Yeah. Uh, first thing, we both work for Near Firm, so uh, check us out. We are at the booth. So, if you have any help with your JavaScript application, we are a professional services company, so let's talk and we can help in all sorts of ways. Um, so, please just, you know, just reach out. So, a couple of things, uh, quick things of the setup. You can use Node 10 Plus. So if you have no 12, it's fine. Um, uh, but but if you do have issues, switch to this version, basically, because yeah. that's what it's written against originally. Um, um, does everyone know and understand and have installed NVM? Anyone don't? Have, does anyone not have NVM installed? OK, cool, cool, cool. Um, what version of Node do you have installed? Node-V. OK, okay should so be fine. Well, okay. If you have issues, Just let us we'll come help you. Yeah. No worries. Okay, good. So everyone's pretty well set up then. Oh, we might um, need more chairs here. Well, know. there's there's two here. There's one here. There's three people. There's one. There's some chairs over here as well. So if you want to go over, dude, GraphQL is really yeah, popular. it's really popular. <laughs> you know, you see. I know. I know. Also, React hooks. Oh. oh, more people. Oh, okay. okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, Hi, everybody. We started too early, I guess. You no, know, it's actually like right, we are right on time, man. Uh, does everyone have a seat? Oh, yes. Maybe one over there. There is one more seat over there. One here at the front. Two, three. Two. Ah, good. Okay. We have fit everybody. There's a, there's a, I think there is some, if you want, if you don't want to sit on the floor, there is one the over floor. here. There, there is. is one over here if you want it. But otherwise, if you're comfortable there, cool. OK, so let's just reiterate. Near form. Near form. Hey. Booth. Booth. Um, there is a raffle at the end of the uh, at, at lunchtime. So please come there. Go there. Whatever. For a there bangle, a, right? It's and a the AirPods. So the AirPods oh, AirPods as well? Yeah. Oh, wow. We're really like ramping up. Yeah. There. Yeah. OK. But there's a thing called a bangle as well. It's, uh, it was a Kickstarter project. Yeah. Well, we? uh, long it's story, blah, blah, blah. It's nice. It's an IoT project. Um, everyone who came in, uh, th would, this is written against Node 10.16, but your version of Node should work with it as well. But if it doesn't... Node 8 won't. Sorry. Node 8 won't. No one's on Node 8, are they still? What about in production? Because <laughs> you really shouldn't be. Because it's not supported anymore. Well, in two weeks. In two weeks, two it's weeks. not supported anymore. Um, so we're going to uh, clone a repository. Um, we're assuming everyone knows how to use Git. If anyone doesn't, talk to your neighbor, talk to us. So, oh yeah, we're going to do that in a minute. What are React hooks? Um, a React hook is a, essentially like a, a mini state machine. It's a reusable stateful function, uh, and it doesn't obstruct the view hierarchy versus other ways of managing state in React. Hi, uh, there's a seat just there at the front, if you can find it. Uh, no 10, uh, you want. <laughs> also, near form booth. <laughs> so here's an example of a React hook. Um, this is one, it's, con it's conceptually, this is why this requires some lib. It's just like, you know, uh, 
for, for talking purposes. Uh, so say we have a, a library that has a use API hook. So the use API hook would be used within uh, a, a, a function component and um, uh, it would return uh, an object from which we destructure de the parameter, uh, the keys, error, and name. Um, the the second value here would be like what the initial value should be, which is where name is loading. So the first uh, value of name would be loading. So when it renders the H two element in the, the JSX, there it would first say loading. The use the API hook would go and query the make make the asynchronous call. When that call resolves, it would trigger a re-render with that new value. And the second time it's called, the use API hook would return an object where the name is whatever that user's name is that correlates with the ID. Do you understand? So this is the flow of how hooks work. Um, there's no, it's not, you're not awaiting your, your rendering and then your re-rendering, which is the React way. And the major difference is you move away from classes. Yeah. In React and just use functions, which is way for me makes it understandable. I could never understood React with classes. So sorry, <laughs> just you know, quick admission here and just this make me use React and love React. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I, and I also agree. Uh, <laughs> but it, this is this is a much more self-contained kind of encapsulated way to work with React, in our opinion. Uh, so what hooks do is they allow you to store and manage local state, state. It allows you to have a separation of concerns that ties into what we're saying about classes. So if you have a class and you have to define how it gets its state and different things, um, and then you have class inheritance involved in that too, things can get coupled quite quickly. But if you're using uh, hooks, um, particularly if you've written them yourself, then you can kind of update that functionality across your application quite easily. Um, and that's where it comes into the functions versus classes, which we've just covered. Um, so GraphQL is a, a data query language. Okay, it's it's it was it was born at Facebook a long time ago to to build an API that can represent the entirety of Facebook, whatever this means. Um, what is useful for? Well, it's useful. It has some very lot of very nice properties, which it's. It's self-evolving. You can evolve it. You don't need to version it, and it's really powerful. It's, it's schema-based, so you write the schema. You get the GraphQL schema, and then you provide some functions and called resolvers to uh, uh, populate that data. It's also strongly typed, so you can actually def define your types, and everything would work. Now, it's nothing, it's nothing related to TypeScript. Okay, so don't worry about that. It's a completely different thing. Um, it's also self-documenting, which is for me the most critical, the most nice feature of this, and what it enables a great amount of productivity. So you can actually explore the API using some tools that we'll, you will see if you're not familiar with them, and it's actually very powerful because of this. It's uh, it shorten up the development cycle of not oh I need to think about this REST API blah blah blah. Instead, you can just add some more data, some some more uh, some more something more into the schema, and just evolve the thing. It uh, it, it has fewer run. It provides have fewer round trips. So in a normal traditional REST application, if you want to fetch three, the data for for your app needs to do three calls uh, over HTTP. Instead of doing three calls, you can just hit your GraphQL endpoint only once, asking for the, all the three the three pieces of data, and will automatically bring it back to you, which is really powerful to uh, provide a better performance on the on the front end of your system. And uh, uh, it also provides a little bit smaller payloads because of all of this. Um, so what is uh, GraphQL hooks? Uh, GraphQL hooks are uh, it's a library that we have written in Nearform to provide a, a smaller version, a, a smaller, uh, a minimal way of using GraphQL with, with hooks, uh, with React hooks. And it's, uh, you know, you're probably used for, familiar with Apollo. Apollo is kind of big compared to what, what you are aiming to do with, with GraphQL hooks. This is tiny and it works really well. And uh, it's uh, it's really lightweight. It's a few kilobytes to add to your to your bundle compared to to, to Apollo. So, um, right. Uh, Let's uh, clone uh, the first URL. The second URL is just uh, to for your interest. It's the library that we're going to be using. We'll keep this up until everyone's got that cloned because we can't really proceed until you've done that. 
Making a picture also helps. I guess while people are cloning, if anyone has any questions they want to shout out on a discussion while that's happening, feel free. Or if not, we can just sit here in awkward silence. Hey. Yes. Yeah. There, yeah, it's good. It's a good. It's actually what I wanted to see in React in the first place. Yes. Like years ago, but I'm glad that they actually went to that place in the end. No, yeah. only with uh, function components. <laughs> well, it's it, that's that's how they've. Uh, I think they're trying to move people towards that by by making that cool. It was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yes. Because ES6 classes were introduced, so they followed that trend of ES6 classes, and then they and now they've come back to the original kind of simple idea, which is great. Um, like we have a problem in this industry where people add complexity for the sake of adding complexity because they think it makes them look good. Um, <laughs> this is recorded, Dave. I'm not sure. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, to me, I think like if you know. What makes people look good to me is when they found an elegant and simple solution to something. And we actually, I do actually really like React Hooks for that. Have you cloned this? OK. Good. Have anybody had any problems cloning? OK. Fine. This yeah, is yeah, the fine. same thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So first part one, OK? Yes, they are fully interoperable. So you can use yeah. a class component inside Hooks and vice versa. Right. It yes. All works. Yes, but you can't use hooks inside of a class component. So, with uh, so say for instance, the React hook use effect is kind of analogous to the uh, component did mount lifecycle method. I think yeah. so. There's there's analogs. So first of all, the goals of the first step is get a GraphQL server up and running and explore that server using Graph Graph IQL. Graphical. Graphical, yeah, graphical. So what you're going to use? You're going to use Node.js. OK, it's Node plus JS interactive. So maybe it's a, the wrong, you have the wrong conference if you want to use another, another language. Uh, we're going to use Fastify. Hey, I'm Matteo. I kind of started Fastify with Thomas like back in 2016. So it's a long time ago. I had some ideas. You had some ideas. Idea. You won't see me anywhere near it, but I was part of it. It was part of it, of the original ideas about all of this. Please check it out. It's it's part of OpenJS uh, Foundation and so on, so you know, check it out. And we're going to use React. OK, yeah, it's React hooks. So Anyone heard of React? And we're going to use some GraphQL stuff. So you can check. So the first thing you do, you go into uh, the exercise folder, part one, uh, hello world, run npm install, and run, run npm run watch, yeah. so that you know, it automatically restarts when you make changes, so you don't need to you know, this, restart the process manually. This is also going to take a little little time to do because npm install takes yeah, a little It's a little while. bit slow because of the Wi-Fi and so on. So, and then you want to go to localhost 3000. Hmm? Come on in. Come we on got, in. We got floor space. Floor space is, 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 oh, there's, there's, there's a chair here. There's a chair here. If anyone wants a chair for their there's back or whatever, there's a chair here. Chair there. Got to look after your back, guys. <laughs> we, t we also take care of your health in this workshop, you see. Anyone? Uh, Need some help with this? All good? OK. Well, let's. Uh... Oh, no, no, wait. They've got to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do a, give us a nod when you're done. We'll, we'll, we'll you check in it? in a second. Have you got it? We've got the... like. Um... Have, you got, have you got it cloned here? We've got an hour left. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I've already installed it. So. so you should see that should be your end result after you've run npm run watch. You should have the server listening one two seven zero zero one three thousand, and if you open that, um, it will be this hello world thing. And you can uh, list users. You can add a user. I'm going to add Mateo. Hey. But if we refresh it, it disappears. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add that server side state using GraphQL. With, with React hooks. Mm. But we need them. Okay. 
not using the latest version. Leave it, leave it there. Leave it. Okay. Has everyone been able to load localhost 3000 and see? Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. The beautiful Hello World application. You see, we are really good CSS developers. <laughs> you know, we put so we much just, style. We just choose not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're minimalist. Uh, okay. So if you go to the list users page. Uh, you can see, as I just showed you, you can add a name. If you refresh, it'll disappear um, because we haven't connected up GraphQL. Dot, dot, dot. Yes. Yet. <laughs> so everyone take a look at uh, in the source server folder. There's a GraphQL.js file. I'll open it as well. By the way, in the thing that you um, cloned. Yeah, you probably want to. In the repo that you cloned, you also have um, this, this index.html file, so you can look at the slides there too on your machine. So this GraphQL.js file, uh, we're acquiring Fastify GQL, which is a module written by Matteo. We'll go into details on that in a second. Don't get too excited. <laughs> we have um, just like a, a mocked data we're not, gonna, we're not using a database for this. It would take too long. But you get the idea this is a placeholder for you know, data storage of uh, an array of users. We have two schemas, which we're going to go into details of. Two types. Uh, yeah, two types. One schema, two types. Yeah, one schema, sorry. Two uh, GraphQL types, uh, one called user, one called query. Query has a uh, user's key with uh, an array of types of user. So this is basically saying this is an array of objects with uh, the names which are strings, which is the describing this here. No. Uh, and then we have resolvers, which is basically the counterpart that you give to Fastify GQL to say this is how we handle a particular type in the schema. So we only have one defined for query, uh, and it has a user's method, which corresponds to this user's key, and we return the user list array from that. Um, and here we have uh, the, uh, the plugin, the Fastify plugin, that registers uh, Fastify GQL um, with our schema, with our resolvers, and notably, we set GraphQL or graphical to true, because if you still have your server running, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can go to is it four slash graphql .html. Yeah. So you go to localhost three thousand forward slash graphql .html. Yeah, right. uh, you've missed the H. I miss the H. You know, I can I can always put in a, a, a typo in here all the time. You know, don't don't. Cool. Yay. Okay. So now we have like a uh, wait. You when you when you open your UI, you won't see this query variables piece. It'll be down here, but you're, you might want to just pull that up for later. Um, you'll see why. So one of the greatest thing about, gra about, about graphical is that you can actually, you know, what you can say, you can open up this, and then if you start typing, you automatically have auto-completion. And you can add inline docs to your, um, you, can, you can add inline docs to, um, uh, to your comments, to, to your resolvers. So you can basically say, I want users. Okay, and so and and then you can actually say, for example, and then you can specify the property, the properties that you want, and you say name, again, and you close. Note that if you open docs, you will see that what are the root types. Those are the ones that are attached to the query object, so that you know it's, you can actually explore this and search it and navigate it completely. So a graphic a graphical graphical is fully self describing. Yes. Yes. So if you open docs, you can actually say, for example, you say you see users, then you can click on users, and then it tells you the fields. You still no way to say, like, mm, no. You need to spend. The key part there is reducing the payloads. Yeah. So you want to only load the data that, are, uh, uh, you, that you need. So you, you, know, you want to know which fields you want. 
So that's because that's a key part of this. So I don't want to return all the full object because my object on my database can have, I don't know, 100 fields. But if I can only ship five or three of those fields, you know, I don't need to develop uh, a version of my, of, the, of my API for my mobile app that requires less fields. I can, they can just connect to the same GraphQL endpoint of the web app that needs more fields. So you don't need to actually uh, implement the same API twice for different clients. So it is really powerful if, if you think it like that, especially as a way for teams to communicate. Then you can press enter, uh, you can press play, and it automatically works, which is pretty powerful because you can explore and develop your queries while using, using these, these development environments that are already a part of the GraphQL ecosystem. And it's really, 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 really powerful, at least from, from my point of view. So um, we go ahead. OK. So one of the things of Fastify uh, GraphQL, GGQL, that we, that we have developed is, the, is, is about performance. So you might want to check this out uh, if, you're, if you're already using GraphQL, because uh, Fastify GQL is actually fast. And uh, we have done a lot of extensive amount of research on how to optimize GraphQL. We've done uh, last year at this conference, Matthias Booth and myself did a talk called GraphQL Accelerated. If you are interested, you might want to check that out. And uh, it's a pretty goes into deep into why and how we have optimized it, how we have optimized GraphQL. Yeah, for, for this, it's this is GraphQL is actually a hard problem, and and because it's it's solving something that that if you design your APIs really well in the first place, and they 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 come from the client in the first place, like you're you're driving it from like a UI perspective, then you could theoretically try to design a system without GraphQL. GraphQL comes into play when you need to aggregate a lot of APIs that you haven't had control over, right? And so. But what it's doing is application joins. Yeah. So yeah. an application join is obviously usually a very bad idea. You want to do that in a database because it's going to be more efficient. Um, so this is actually a hard problem in Node because we're you're trading off a lot of different things. So performance is very hard uh, for 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 this kind of thing. So Fastify GQL is like pretty amazing. But the one thing it doesn't have yet, Matteo. Feder federation, yes. Federation. So, so if you're in Apollo, you can have you can you can distribute your GraphQL schemas across basically an organization. Fastify GQL needs that. If you want to see that with performance, you gotta talk to hit me. him on uh, on GitHub. So were you all able to run the query? Fantastic. Uh, one more thing that Fastify GQL does, which is pretty amazing, it does it compiles the queries, the GraphQL queries, into JavaScript functions uh, in a safe way. So uh, what it does is essentially just you know, take your GraphQL query, validates it, and then compiles it down to a really fast uh, JavaScript function that then it's uh, evaluated and executed. And we cast that function. So because of that, we can save a lot of, the ti a lot of time that um, is spent into uh, validating the query, caching the query, uh, validating the query, and compiling the query. Uh, yes and no. So it's it, to some extent it's similar, but the problem is that persistent queries do not do that. On the other side, the, the implementation of persistent queries did not do that. All of this is done at runtime, so essentially it's cached within the same process. So it is slightly a different technique. It's the same kind of concept, but a different technique. So if you have your server still running, run this query uh, and see that you get the result. Just make sure that everyone's uh, working. As in, it's working for you. <laughs> did we run it ourselves? Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. So everyone who's run it, have you seen this this output? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. 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 Okay. Part two. I think we're going to make it to part three. Yeah. Uh, so part two, the GraphQL schema. Um, we're going to update the schema to create a user. So we're not just going to query the users, we're going to start creating users. Um, and we're going to test it with graphical or GraphQL, whatever. So going to uh, the second uh, part two uh, exercise. So uh, you have to run npm install again, uh, run npm run watch again, same pattern, and go to localhost 3000. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Stop the first one. Otherwise, you'll have a port conflict.
Everyone got there? Yeah? Still mm -hmm. waiting? Okay. So let's take a look at the GraphQL JS in uh, part two source server. Uh, so I actually really like working with the font this big. So much nicer on the eyes. Um, so in the GraphQL JS in part two, we still have the user list. We've got some to-do items. Everything else, I think, is the same. So we're going to start editing this file. And on the to-do list, we say we're going to add a mutation type to the schema. We're going to add a create user mutation. Uh, we're going to take a, a name parameter. And uh, we're going to return a user type from the schema. So let's do that. So GraphQL schema defines the relationships and the structures of the data. Nothing to really elaborate on there, is there? So one of the key things of, uh, of GraphQL is that you have this types object that can return types, other types object, and other types object, and other objects. It's, um, it, it defines the relationship between things. Let's say that you have a dog, that you have a type dog and a type person. You can say, you can create a, a, a property on the type person that says a dog. It, dogs and that returns the dogs for that person. Now these we call our different resolvers. So what you can do is you can uh, structure your code into in a way so that all, this, all these various concerns are separated and it actually works pretty well because you can actually think about different features on your application and implement them very quickly based on this. I guess there was more to elaborate on. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, in the, so in, our, in the schema in our GraphQL.js file, this is what it currently looks like. Um, the resolvers, as we've explained, are the functions that uh, are the counterparts to the schema. Um, but the queries are for fetching. So we have this query in our schema. But mutations are for writing. Um, so, obviously, some of you probably know this, but we're just making sure that we're all on the same page as we get to the hooks part. Um, so, to create a user, we're going to add a mutation to the schema and, a, and to the, the counterpart of it to the resolvers in our GraphQL.js. So, at the bottom of the schema, if we add this in here, type mutation, create user, name, string, with an exclamation point. They, they call this a non-nullable type, okay, non otherwise known as required. Required. It's a non-nullable, which <laughs> means required. What a weird way to say required. You know, it's, it's non-nullable, which is required, right? I don't know. It's, I'm sorry. It, just, it depends if you're a positive person or a really negative person. <laughs> you see? You can, you can see negative logic or positive logic. I don't know. It depends on how you write your if, if, if sentences. Has everyone been able to add this yet? Still some people working on it? I hear a couple of keys clicking away, so. Question while mm -hmm. waiting. Uh, all mutations, kind of changing the data. Like, like. You need to put them into the mutation. Okay. The, the top level mutation, but I would put them there. Yes. yes. These are top-level things, but yeah. Now, you can make things a little bit more complicated with the, the nesting and objects, but you need to have a top-level entry point. So the, the, the only top-level entry points that your application can use are query and mutation. So the rest is known top-level, so you need to. No, but no. you could. Cool. Everyone good? Everyone got this into their schema? Now we're going to do the resolver. So in the resolver's object, we need to add a mutation key, capital M. Uh, and then uh, that uh, key holds an object, which has a method called create user. Oh, shoot, I forgot to look into What's the underscore for? It's the current object. So it's the mutation object. Don't worry. Oh, Don't worry right. So it. the mutation, this is, this is your design, isn't it? So No, it's not my design. Oh, GraphQL. I thought it was. It's okay. GraphQL. 
So one of the key things about GraphQL is that you can always re return the current object. So if you're actually querying or mutating something in a big tree, you can always refer to the parent object on that, on that chain, and that is that underscore. But given that mutation is the root object, we don't need it, so we call it underscore and forget about it. It's a little bit functional style putting it as underscore. So I don't know if you're familiar with one of those functional languages we put underscore when you don't need it. It basically means I don't care about this parameter, right? What? Hmm? Where, where you would use the object in, yeah. So you will, typically, you use those objects a lot when you query. So if you're querying a big graph structure, you, can, you want to know, for example, which, you know, if you have a, a, a person that has a dog, you want to know when you're, calling, you're writing the resolver dog, you want to know which person you are asking the dog for. And that data will be in that parameter. Make sense? Okay, so in the mutation resolver, we're just pushing to the user list. Obviously, this is just for the purposes of, of learning. Um, because you don't want stateful services, you want to push this to a database, right? Everyone good? Okay, so we're going to test that mutation in graphical. Um, so if you've still got your server running, go, or if you haven't, you should start it with npm run watch. Uh, Logos 3000 forward slash graphql.html. Um, and make sure, remember I said like that little hidden, almost hidden panel? where it's like your variables, make sure you've got that ready because we're going to use that in a second now. Has everyone been able to load the GraphQL, graphical UI for part two? Okay, I'm seeing yeses, I'm not seeing noes, so we shall proceed. Uh, yeah, we might want to, to test it first. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, sure, you're it's right. right here. Yeah. This is it. Uh, so we're going to, you can, by the way, you can get this off the slides if you don't want to hand type it. Uh, so. I need to run the part two, man. Am I not running it's it? Not, it's not running. Oh, amateur. You keep killing it. I don't know why. Muscle memory. Yeah, I know. Mm. It's, you have it over there. Refresh. Yep. So first we need to put this in. No, not that. Yeah, the copy-paste on the slides is annoying because when you try to copy, it goes to the next slide. Uh, so we put that in there. The query variables down here, we also need to add. Uh, and I'm just going to do it, and then you can kind of see it. The query variables here. Because this is, a, this is essentially a, a variable, kind of a variable that you define in the schema. And then the query variables uh, are then passed to... Uh, the resolver. The resolver. Uh, one of the key things about uh, uh, using this type of, this using query variables, it's because it's like, I don't know, SQL. I mean, if you're familiar with SQL, hopefully everybody, you probably have seen like there is question marks when you put, put, the, put the things down. You don't concatenate a string for all sorts of problems like SQL injections and all whatever issue you can imagine. Query variables are the exact same thing. So you use them when to specify parameters. You don't concatenate that string into the main query because that would be a problem. Make sense? Run it, eh? Wait, let's run it. Oh. <laughs> you probably haven't filled oh, it in. Because we didn't do it. Right, yeah. okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, Have you got no, it? I'm gonna go to one I made earlier. <laughs> you see, it's... Yeah, you need to refresh me. It's not loaded yet. Yeah, but you need to refresh. Yeah. Yay, okay. Woo! And that's what you should see. If you see the other thing, you didn't do it right. Like me. So then you can actually... And then if you go back to the query... Then you can see that Bob's been added. Okay. Anyone in here called Bob? Guest of honor? Oh. No Bob. Come on. No Roberts? I guess that name's fallen out of fashion then. Yeah. I like the way, uh, hmm? Uncle Bob. Then. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you are storing the data in your. So go to the resolver. It's not there. Not there. Go to the slides. Okay. Yeah. So if we go back through the slides for a second, go back, go back, go back, one forward. Yeah. Oh, there it is. You see it. So we see it's pushing it to the list. User list is an array. Um, again, just for learning purposes, it's, um, we're not recommending that you just store an array for your state. 
yeah. in your process, but we just push that that mutation resolver uh, calls create user. Hmm? Yes. Um, For the of purposes the, of this workshop. One of the things that is interesting here is that if you use uh, you both create users and users can be async functions. So you can use the async function and promises to write your result. Nice. OK, does it make sense? Hmm? Yeah. We're nearly at the hooks part, and we still have time. So yeah, we are rushing towards, towards the goal. So if you're. OK, here we are, part three. This yeah, is where we wanted time. to get to. OK, <laughs> foundation laid. Um, so the goals of part three, we want to Check out this GraphQL hooks library, see it in action. Uh, we want to hook up the back end data to the front end web page. Uh, we want to retrieve a list of users from an API using a GraphQL hook. So if we go into part three, uh, or you can continue, if you've got part two working, you can continue working on that however you want to do it. Uh, but anyone who wants to make sure that you know, they're, they're starting fresh, go to part three, npm install, npm run watch. Everyone there? Yeah? NPM installed is fast today. Uh, in the same folder, we're gonna, we might need to open a new tab, or you might need to control C and then run npm run watch again, however you want to do it. But we want to do npm install GraphQL hooks. So we're going to bring this GraphQL hooks library in right now. Download it. We pushed, we pushed a new release out this morning. So. Oh. <laughs> That's a good time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you deploy on Fridays, right? <laughs> so if it doesn't work, raise your hand. If they all raise their hand, then we are to blame. We are, yeah, we know. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. I just want to, by the way, while yeah, we, we are here, out Brian. I just want to sh shout out to Brian Mullan, which is, was the... Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian, the original author of GraphQL Hooks. So. Um, we have released in shipped uh, support for uh, GraphQL subscriptions, which is a long conversation and topic for uh, uh, to support like live data, both on GraphQL hooks and Fastify GQL in the last month. So, pretty big. Good, good work. Yeah. Did everyone install GraphQL hooks? Okay. So in uh, source client JS app shell.js. We want to import the GraphQL client from GraphQL hooks, and then we need to set it up. So internally, all the GraphQL query goes to slash GraphQL by default. That's very simple, right? We could have made that the default. Yeah, you maybe should. You should. So in. Great. What have you done? <laughs> so we're going to, what was it, client JS app shell. And we want to import uh, the GraphQL client. And we want to instantiate the GraphQL client. And then we can probably remove import and instantiate. Good. Yankee point three. And Thor. Yeah. So that's that to do done. <laughs> so this is a long topic, yeah. you know, broad. How long have we got? Uh, my, uh, the current, I think, wh where the industry is going most of the time is using uh, JSON web tokens. Most of the, the, that's what goes for possibly the 
one of the most widespread solutions. But because it allows really, you to keep your services stateless. Yes, because you would like to keep your services. And they are, that's a standard way to actually encode a token somewhere. And then you need, can store that token whenever you want, or regenerate it, refresh it. It's really, it's a very well done standard. And I would just recommend to use that and not Ray Vendor. OK, everyone got that? No frowns? All the frowns are upside down. OK. Uh, the next part is, in the same file, we want to uh, add that client into uh, uh, the, um, we want to wrap a provider. Uh, does everyone know how React providers work, React provider in context? So React context is essentially a way to do sort of lateral state. Instead of having to pass properties all the way down through to components, we can wrap a, a provider around a component, and then we can access that, that context from any component in that tree later on. So it's kind of like a little bit of a trapdoor. Um, so or dependency injection, depends on what Dependency you injection. I don't know. I, I'd get you know, a bit sort of narrative with it, uh, narration. We can talk about it for like a, a day. Yeah. Uh, so what we do, like we we've got this here, but actually you don't need to reduplicate that. You can just say I'm going to add uh, client context into my imports like this, right? And then we're going to wrap the client context provider around the app shell, and then. We say the value of that provider is client. Yes. So let's see if we can get these all in. So when we when you set the value of a provider, you can have you can import that client context somewhere else, and then you can say client context consumer wrap that around your component, and then suddenly you have access to that client. Yes? Y yes, but this is, this, is, this is now the GraphQL hooks library, which is front end. Yeah. Yeah, we're pointing it at yeah. the Fastify server. We are pointing yes. at the Fastify server. Yeah. Sorry. Maybe. If we had our own context, um, like our custom context for React, we just wrap it above this, or we have to use graphic. You can wrap it above. That tree, right? Yeah. OK. I don't understand the question. It's if you want another context, you can just wrap that. Oh, yeah, you can have multiple contexts. You can have as there's, many as you want. There's also, you, instead of using client context consumer, there's also a use context React hook. So then you can just use a hook to get your context once you've wrapped it, which is quite elegant. Has everyone got this part? Great. Now, we're going to set up uh, in source app pages list users.js. We're going to take those queries that we were playing with earlier in graphical, and we're going to uh, 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 you know, put them into that file as uh, uppercase list users query and create users mutation. Source app pages, source app pages, list users. So they go outside of the function, right? Yeah. So that's, that's what we're doing. We're adding this to source app pages, list users.js, adding these two uh, queries that we were playing with earlier. Well, one query, one mutation. And we're just about to hit the magical part where we actually use a hook. Wait, I'm just coming. <laughs> we can't hear you from it. I noticed that the schema has been duplicated, right? Because we had we used to have the schema in the server.js file. And yes. Here. Will that always be the case? Do you have to duplicate it? Or do you, like, does it, um, as in, like, 
new project, then you can probably import it. Uh, there is so it's, this is not the schema. These are queries. Oh yeah, they're not types. They're not types. The types are in the. The types are on the other side. This specified the queries. So these so, these we we use these queries in graphical earlier. That's why you recognize them, but they're not actually in the server. Sorry, I miss. I was incorrect there. Still some typing, so we're gonna. We still have half an hour. Hmm? Yeah, we, we can do more. We, we can do part four. We could. We could start part four at least. Yeah. See, it's part seven. Seven parts of this. <laughs> yeah, we weren't worried about whether we had enough content. Okay, I'm hearing a couple of keys still typing, so we'll just wait a few more minutes, maybe one or two minutes. Any questions? You see, not, they're not almost not typing anymore. It's good? Okay. It's good. All right. So, also in List Users JS, we're going to use the use query hook from GraphQL hooks. So, here we're importing it, as my lovely assistant just helped to display. Um, and then we, this, this piece here needs to be inside the actual um, component because you can only use hooks inside of components. Else it doesn't work. Um, React will complain badly, so don't worry. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's very good reason for that because they actually use the fact that you've used it in the component to actually track the state. So that's why you can't use it without. So the use query hook returns an object with a data and a refetch key. The data key is the, the data that is fetched by the query. And we uh, do an assignment as we're destructuring that object. We also assign a default value of an object with a user's key and an empty array so that we don't have issues where we, it means we can just map over an empty array later on, right? Yes. Is users typed? Is users tied to our query? Which part? Yes. The list users query? Yes. yes. Would yes. it be called something else if we changed the shape? No. So this is your constant. You the have a constant we earlier. We just did it here. The, that's a con that constant. Yeah. OK. So it's nothing because related. Because of the types. Hmm? So because no, it, because of the texting there. You can call it Bob if you want to, or Fubar. When we defined our schema, we had users as a, a property that was formally defined. Right? Oh, yes. Yes. So that won't change. No. All of this code is stable. Yes. Yes. Got it. But the key chart, the key thing the on point. evolving GraphQL is on writing GraphQL applica based application is that you do not change things. You just add, it's just add more properties, more resolvers, more types. You do not remove anything. In this way, old clients can still work. So, for example, if you write a mo mobile app, you can actually have used different GraphQL. Uh, you can use the same queries but with different properties. And then you have multiple versions of that app being served by the same GraphQL endpoint, even if you add more types and more queries to support new features. So you don't need to, it's uh, essentially, it's also one of the problems of REST API that you have those nice version numbers in those REST APIs. I don't know if you love them, but I, whatever. I like them. I like those version numbers. Okay, so I've put it into, am I in the right place? Let's use it, yeah. So I put it into the list users uh, JS file. So we have import use query from GraphQL hooks at the top. And then within our exported list users function component, we at the very top of that, we have uh, this uh, call to use query. And as, as we were just discussing, we pass in the list users uh, query uh, constant into the use query hook. And so what's going to happen is, uh, well, we need to do some more setup, but 
what, what can happen then is that use query can asynchronously call the server, as I was talking about earlier with the use API uh, concept. concept. Um, the initial state will just be a, a, a data with an empty users array. When that query resolves, it can re-render that list users component with that, with that state. Makes sense so far? Has everyone got this down? Yeah? Cool. Um, so the data, the use query uh, returns uh, a data key, and that's the JSON that's uh, past JSON that's received from the API, and a refetch function, uh, so you can uh, trigger a refetch um, potentially with, uh, I guess... Uh, a button, yeah. or a refresh button if you want to. Or yeah. maybe when you do an action. So, yeah. if you want to, if you change the data, you might want to refetch that. So again, in the same in the same file, we're going to uh, de destructure the 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 use mu use mutation uh, hook from the GraphQL hooks library. So we don't have to do it as a separate import. We can just do this uh, this here. You can remove lines from three to six. Oh, can I? All right, yeah. I'm also going to remove all of this because it's getting in the way. Yeah. Okay, so if everyone got the use mutation hook imported, and then we can use the use mutation hook it also inside uh, a function component. We'll put it underneath use query. So use mutation returns uh, an array where the first element of that array is the function that's used to call that mutation. So we're calling it create user. We can call it whatever we want when we destructure an array. Is everyone familiar with destructuring? Yeah? Pretty neat. I like it. Just don't you like destructure the sugar, don't, Just don't nest your destructuring, because that's crazy. <laughs> don't do that. Keep it just like go on a new line and destructure the next thing. Otherwise, it gets a bit insane. We had a massive pull request recently on Not Core to remove some very nested destructuring that we put in mm. for some reason. Nice. Uh -huh. Right here. So refetch is def is uh, aliased to refetch users with the it's uh, destructuring. Colon. Yeah. So uh, when you destructure, you can actually alias one key to another key using a colon. Right here. No, we're not using it yet, but it's right here. That, that's the declaration of that variable. So the, the so use query returns an object with a refetch oh, right, key right, called right, function. Sorry, yeah, sorry. you got it. Okay. Yep. You can remove line 30. 13. 13. Oh, yeah. No, the, yeah, just the, keep the function, but remove just the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And now in create new user, uh, we want to turn that into an async function because currently it's not. Is everyone familiar with async await? Yeah. Do you like async await? Okay. Have you watched Broken Promises talk by James Snell? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> <laughs> Is your mind still all intact? <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. It requires thought. This is the problem uh, with like a easy to learn, hard to master. It's pretty much the motto of JavaScript, <laughs> and it's still going with async await. Um, so we got this, remember we got this create user function that we've destructured from the first element of the use mutation hook. We're now going to use that. It returns a promise so we can await the uh, result of that uh, in our create new user function right here, which is in turn used in this on click handler. So we await the, the create uh, user function, pass in variables, pass in name, which we're getting from uh, the use state hook here. Uh, initially, that's going to be set to nothing, um, but we can set the name. The name is set in the the input field here uh, when you when you add a name. So this variables uh, property that you that you pr pass to create user an object with the property variables is saying I want to set the variable of my mutation 
which is name, right? So that that gets passed in uh, on the on the server side. Similar to how we did uh, name Bob in the the query variables panel that we had to lift up. Same thing. Everyone got that? Oh, and we also want to do refresh, refresh users after we create a new user. So then you've got like a, an immediate update from adding that user. Yeah. He projects very well, though. So uh, I'm not familiar that much with React, but when you do set name, mm -hmm. aren't you updating the state, which will trigger a re-render, which correct. in itself will redo the use query, which will refetch the users on its own. So why you yes. need to refetch again? Good question. It's, it's not. It does not. So it does not. That refer, you know, the, it's, uh, memori the data is memoized automatically. So it, we're not refetching the you calling the GraphQL API any time, every time. We are just calling it once, and then cache, cache the data. And when you call refetch, you actually fetch get the data again. Otherwise, you'd end up in uh, continuous. Well, no, because you're not calling set. You're only calling set name in create new yeah. user. It's uh, it's all maintained in the local state, so it should be. Fine. These are good questions. Yes. Yeah. Hmm? Sorry. When is the data flush from memory? When is so if the if any data that you use do uh, that you, you get with use query uh, is stayed memoized, when is it flushed from memory? Do you keep it in local storage in, in memory or it's attached to uh, the um, the component, so it's not connected to okay. to other stuff. So it's basically when the component goes out of scope, that data you will get lost. Which is how hooks work at a core, yeah. uh, in a core way. If for whatever reason, uh, instead of doing the queries in um, in the components themselves, you wanted to do it, let's say in one centralized spot on app startup, you just want to get everything like a big app state. You would just need a component to do that. You just take it in one component and then you pass whatever stuff yes, down. Yes, you could do that. Yeah. But what about the refetches? Uh, because let's say individual things need to now. Let's say I individual believe you could pass the refetch function down if yeah. you wanted to. I see. As problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or as context. Okay. Good. Great questions, guys. Loving it. Uh, set name is the a set state function, which is just this is just a normal uh, React hook called use state. If you know about hooks, you'll be familiar with use state. It's kind of a core piece. Um, it returns an array with the the value of the state and then an updater function. We call it set name because we can. Um, Oh gosh, we're on part four. No, we can try that, Dave. You want to run that? Oh yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> you might want to run it, I don't know. All right, okay, okay, so what we can do, npm might, run watch. It might be wrong. Yeah, it might be wrong, I might need to fix it. <laughs> Yay, here we go. Oh, I didn't install it. <laughs> do what I say, not what I do, apparently. Yeah. No, we also say in the load. We're using use query to load the good data. Oh, yeah, Dave, you need to update the thing. Sorry. Sorry, say again, what's happening? You need to... No, oh, right, yeah. You need to do data instead of users. You need to put down... No, it's users. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, but we need to do structure. No, no, Dave, it's fine because it's already put as users. It's fine. You don't need to do anything. It should work. No, it won't. Just try. No, it won't because the, the users is here inside of data, so we have yeah, to but, get... Yeah, uh, but... Okay. Yeah, so we have to do const users... Yeah, but I think equals it's... Equals data. Yeah, okay. So if you add this line to line uh, to underneath, you do const uh, destructure users from data because there's a users array in there that you need to get rid of or and then that will be then mapped over in this yep. UL element. So before we can progress let's try that destructure. Evolve. Yeah, well, it will work. This will work. Okay. I'm pretty confident this will work. Staking my reputation on it. Cool. Not cool. What? Open. Hey, hey, hey. Look at the. Uh, look at the console. What is the. 
He is not bundling correctly. Oh, really? Yeah. When in doubt, remove node modules. <laughs> also, package lock if you have that. Yeah, package lock has caused us some issues. Hmm? Or shrink, or shrink wrap. wrap. Same thing. At least shrink wrap is kind of like explicit opt in. All right. Is this your update? No, it's not. It's going to be so funny if your update. I don't think so. Is it working for somebody? Well, you're a better programmer than me. Uh, that would be a good one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pet programming. Hey. Woo. So we can create a user, Dave. I can do myself. Yeah. Ego to school. Yeah. Refresh, and it's still there. Okay. So you should be able to do that. Were you all able to do it? Because we weren't. Not yet. Not without okay. help. Okay, who needs help? I might not be the best person, but... Uh, what? Oh, you've not... Um, sorry, go back. No, go back to use mutation. That line. Where is it? You just showed me it. Here. Um, you're, you're, not, um, you're not calling it. You're just saying. Oh. Yeah. You've got to pass in the uh, create uh, user's mutation. Yeah. User. Uh-huh. Where is the error? Sorry, what line? Okay, go to the line, sorry. Yeah, let's see. Line four. Okay, so it's where you're trying to destructure from use. You say, it says you, you, that says user query, not use oh. query. Wait a second. What? Say loud or not? No, not loud. Okay. Anyone else? Everyone, everyone else got this working? Nice. Over here? So you see this use state one? Simple. You call set name. That oh, hold on. You've misspelled use mutation. Yeah, so the same thing happens for the refresh. That would. So we call refresh. Yeah. 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 Anyone else? There. Next one. Say, say mirror. Hmm? Let me see it. No, it's no, not magic. Query. It's definitely not magic. Use oh, query. Use. It's definitely yes. not magic. Okay. Any hooks are usually okay, prefixed okay, with okay. use. Uh, you can. You can. Yes, you can. I don't, but you can. Yeah, so you, this is actually a good question, so you might want to say it loud. Um, I was wondering if you could use TypeScript to help keep track of all of the different schema consistencies that you need to create across this. I think that depends. If you if you if you bought into TypeScript, then probably. But if you've not, then don't. <laughs> don't use TypeScript to do this. Um, it's a, I think it's just a completely different paradigm, and it's an opt-in kind of thing. Problem. It's like you need the whole house to get the kitchen sink. Um, I like TypeScript for the DTS files because I think that has value in like a cross-org kind of schema interface thing. And I like TypeScript because it can process JS doc. So that's completely opt-in, and you can just apply a tool to that at any time you want to. Um, beyond that, like I think it's value. you could use that in that way. You could use JS doc with TypeScript to help yeah, with the, the, the GraphQL kind of typing and things loading. like that. Yeah. Um, but and I like that because it's totally opt-in. Um, but if you're using TypeScript, then oh, why not? Uh, there's oh, actually a library I saw recently that was a, uh, I think it's called like TS GraphQL or GraphQL TS, something like that, where someone has actually done a project where it is like a, a merging of those two things. So it might be worth checking out if you're into TypeScript.
yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, again, I think like if, if you follow Mateo's advice of like never change your schemas, then that's easy. But if you ever yes, want to okay. change a schema, like the more you kind of enforce those types, the more places there are to change and the harder it gets. And uh, yeah, my, my thing with GraphQL as well is I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would use it when I had no other choice. Because as soon as you start using it, you have overhead. So like when I'm greenfielding, I, I'd say don't do GraphQL until you get to this place where you kind of think, okay, the complexity here is running a little bit out of control. So now we need to use GraphQL. Unless the project you're greenfielding is a back-end project where with no front-end component, that the organization is separated in such a way that the front-end team never want to interact with the back-end and then there's no full stack. Say there might be a mobile team, something like that. In that case, um, it makes sense to do GraphQL from the start because then they can always define exactly what they want. Hmm? Yes, of course. Work? Yes. Yeah. Of course. Like Come to the booth, we can talk. Don't worry. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, say again. You, when you say local state, you mean on the server or on the client? <laughs> Is there anybody stuck? The, the, on the UI. Oh, yes. it's, uh, don't worry. Can yes. we also uh, that provide yeah. so, like, don't worry about it. Yes, you could do that. No yeah, you could do that. But we, we, we want to set the name because we want to display it as well. Yeah, so we do it, we take an extra step. But you could do that, yes. We've got like five minutes. Is, hmm? there any, is there any point going to part four? No. We could introduce it. No, I would just go through. Uh, do you uh, think? Do you think? Okay, so have you got any questions? Hmm? Yes. That's the thing. Sorry. Otherwise. Okay, yeah, that's up here. Sorry. Is uh for well, local testing, is there a way like a pattern in place for making use query and use mut mutation return? I would recommend to use just and right. not just mux. Oh. And so there is there is some, some track some stuff on the on the uh, on it's your It's not wrong, but it's Yeah. That's the React way of doing things. I know, man. I just don't like it. I know, but I know you don't like it. Yeah. But, you know. and I agree with you, though. It's the React like it. way. The React way of doing things. Just use Desmo. Uh, but there is there is some more discussion about this in the readme and so on. And if not, open an issue and we can help out. Uh, any other questions? A uh, couple more things that are interesting in this workshop. So I'm going through them very quickly. First of all, it's you know there is some pagination. How to implement pagination in this is a concept that needs to implement every, everywhere. And you need to re reinvent the wheel with GraphQL to some extent. So, you know, another way of doing pagination. So please check it out. I'm not going, I'm going very quickly. So I'm just. Yeah, going. this is just if, in case you want to continue in your own time. And. Uh, uh, part five is caching. Part five is caching. Again, very important piece. Unfortunately, GraphQL, it sites up all of nice things about uh, HTTP caching, so we might want to do some different things for caching. You know, it has some, some side effects. So uh, I'm not going to go through that much, but there is some, some caching and so on and so forth. Um, and if you want to go forward, there is server-side rendering, which is pretty important part if you're writing a React application. So Can I just say something about server-side rendering in general? No, I don't want to enter the topic. We don't have much time. Well, how much time have we got? Three minutes. Don't server-side render it as a default choice. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. If you want to know more why? Booth. Booth. Um, and uh, there is another module called uh, GraphQL Ux SSR that you can use to do this piece. Nice. And yeah, and uh, blah, blah, blah. And GraphQL looks are awesome. Woo! Woo! I started to clap. <laughs> so um, these were some people that were involved in helping prepare this because this was actually a cross cross team effort. So. Yes. So this was done by a lot of people at Nearform. So if you want, just big shout to all those guys that uh, and gals that helped out over the course of of this year. So it's a nice project that we started at the beginning of. Uh, 20 uh, of 2019, so it's been 
growing and done pretty well. So and feel free to free to throw any PRs or issues, all that kind of stuff, as as usual. Hope you enjoyed it. You close. You, you have them on your machine already. Oh my goodness. Index. Go to talk. Index.html. Just open index.html. It doesn't use any crazy framework for doing slides. It's just an HTML file. You see. Thanks, this everyone. might say a, a thing or two about our style, but you know. Booth. <laughs>